and the only inspired person is the original author, which means that we must go back to the people that first heard the message to understand the truth and then by God's help to apply that truth with the same power and significance uh, to our society and our day. What bothers me as a Bible teacher and preacher is it seems like some Christians want to turn first century Greco-Roman society into God's will for every society of every day. And that, that's just crazy. And this gives me a good opportunity to talk about that. So I hope you will notice that the verse 18 is talking about slavery. Now, slavery is a reality in the ancient world. Slavery had little or nothing to do with race in the ancient world. If you were defeated in battle, you were sold as a slave. Two-thirds of the world in the Greco-Roman Mediterranean world were slaves. Now, God sent his gospel into that culture. If, and surprisingly, the New Testament never attacks, condemns, or depreciates Slavery. You say, well, how can that be? Well, if Christianity, a young, fledgling sect of Judaism, would have attacked a pillar of ancient society like that, it would have been crushed and disciplined out of existence almost immediately. But the principles of Christianity, the dignity and worth of the human person, over time, caused this terrible, terrible, human-on-human -human abuse to stop, at least, at least on national levels. I, I don't know, uh, I don't have the words to communicate to you the horror and anger, and I'm not hyperbolizing here, that I feel over the trafficking of human beings, particularly for sexual activities that is rampant in many cultures in the world today. God, have mercy on us that because our children aren't stolen, we're not riled up when other people's children are stolen and turned into addicts and, and uh, sexual objects, and we just sit in our wonderful buildings and go, oh, is there a problem? Yes, there is a problem. 